Well, today we're going to take a look at the data table in PowerShell, how to create one, use a query to insert into that data table, and uh, there's a couple of tricks here with the uh, data types as well, but we're going to try to keep it simple. As usual, I tend to sway towards the administrative side when it comes to collecting data. In this case, we're collecting database and the database info from each SQL instance. We're going to do it for just one because I have this one VM, but obviously what we do here, you can scale out and you can send this PowerShell out to multiple SQL instances and collect this data and insert it into your custom data table. So the result set is just going to give us the instance, database name, when it was created, whether it's set to read only, the current state, and the recovery model. So we're going to put this information into a brand new data table in PowerShell. The first thing I already have written here is the instance, the query that we have here in our management studio, and then we're basically just going to send these results to a results variable. And if you've looked at any of my previous videos, I use the invoke SQL CMD all the time. So it's very simple to find some couple of variables, pass it to invoke SQL CMD, and it runs the command for you. Now this all by itself, we can and it's the same result that we get from our management studio. So we need to create a table that matches the, these values. The data table is a different type of object, so we're going to need to create a new object. We're just going to call it data table and new object system dot data dot data table. Now this is an empty object, so we actually need to create the fields uh, that we want to populate. Just like you do in SQL when you create a table, you have to create the columns, define the data type, etc. In this case, we have to do the same thing using the object the data table that we just created. Hit the dot, you're going to find columns. And hit another period, and you're going to find the add option. And you, it already creates the parentheses for us. And this first one, well, we're going to call that uh, SQL instance. And that's it, it creates a column called SQL instance. Now we just need to go down the list here and create a column for each one. And recovery. We're going to add a timestamp field. And uh, what this is is basically we're going to save the uh, time, date and time that the, each record was created. In a normal table, that's kind of a common thing to do anyway. It can tell you when that exact record was created. So this creates those columns in the data table object. Now we need to go through our results with a for each, and one by one, we need to insert those records just like you would with the insert command in SQL Server. We'll be looking at the DB in results. The for each looks at each record that comes back and it assigns it to the dollar sign DB variable and that's the one we're going to use to assign our values. Now we need to add a row so we're going to use a method in the data table called new row. Now for each of these fields we're going to assign the result set field to the field in the data table. So the row that's in the data table is called SQL instance. And it's going to be equal to our db dot instance. I'll use a capital. And we need to do that for each one of the values. So the row is called DB name. And from the query, it's called just name. The row is created. And from the query, it's called create date. Read and is read only. State. Hmm. 
Yep, that's not right. This is the recovery and the recovery model from the query. And then this last one is our timestamp. We can't do it this way. Our timestamp is going to be equal to something else. For the timestamp, we're going to use a get date. I already have this formatted, so I didn't have to type it. So this is just using the get date, and we're formatting it basically the same as a date time in a SQL server. Now we go back to reference our data table. And it's rows. Dot add again. And we're going to... And we're going to assign the uh, dollar sign row that we created in the beginning of the for each. Uh, this is the step that actually adds the records to the data table. So if you don't have this last one in here, then it's just not going to add anything. It'll go through the assignments and just do nothing after that. So now that this is added here, the, uh, the data table should be filled with the records for our databases. And as you can see, this is the format, the default format for the object, obviously. But we can see that the instance name, database, all, this, all these values is what we had in our query up above here. And of course, you can pipe this out if you want to. You can also use uh, out, uh, grid view. Gives you the pop-up if you had a lot of these things and you wanted to sort them, save them, filter them. So a few other aspects that we, you may or may not use is that you can specify the data types in the, each one of these columns. What I did is let PowerShell decide what the data types are. And uh, honestly, I believe it usually defaults to string. But we can actually assign a standard for each one. This is what the code would look like. You can define. You see, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just the add. And then after that, it has a definition of the data type. This is the data type, the system data type for string. You got your date time, decimal, uh, integer in 32, and uh, another date time. Now one of the tricks I ran into, in case you run into this, if you do define it this way, what I had trouble with is getting this get date to save. Would not do it. It kept giving me an error. Uh, so what I had to do was actually cast this as a date time like this put in the parentheses and then just put the date time before it and um, that may forces it into that date time data type whatever um, and then it was able to save it in that timestamp field if you're defining it as a date time it's a little strange because this format is correct but it just it wouldn't accept it so I hope this helps you out. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe below and visit the website at dbtales.com. Thanks.